will be historic for our country, but also ensure our role of leadership around the globe. So I am happy to be with these leaders, and I want to thank you for your part in allowing our administration and our country to see the progress that we've seen thus far on the issue of the Dobbs decision. So the United States Supreme Court, in the Dobbs decision, took a constitutional right that had been recognized from the people of America, from the women of America. And what we have seen around the country are extremist so-called leaders passing laws to punish women, to criminalize health care providers. Um, in states, in, in many states, we're seeing uh, an approach that suggests there should even be no exception uh, in the cases of rape or incest. And I will tell you, um, having spent a large part of my career as a prosecutor, and I specialize in child sexual assault cases and violence against women, the idea that laws would be passed, that after a person has endured such a, 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 an act of violence to not allow her to exercise the self-determination then to make decisions about her body and her future, is abhorrent. So this is what we are seeing happening around our country, but we also saw what happened in Kansas, where a very important point was made obvious. This is a nonpartisan issue. No matter who you voted for in the last election, who you plan on voting for in the next election. I think we should all agree that our nation was founded on certain fundamental principles, including the principles of freedom and liberty. And another very important point on this issue is that to stand for the proposition that the government should not interfere in the most intimate, private decision a person can make about their body and their future, to stand in support of that does not require one to abandon their faith or their beliefs. It's simply saying the government should not be making that decision for her. And that the government should not be telling a woman what to do with her body. So there are fundamental principles at stake here. And our administration, as General Ford has said, is taking action. The President has signed executive orders, and we will be doing more. But as it relates to the leaders here in Nevada, we know that, again, the work that must be done to stand for the women of America and agree that we trust them to make decisions that are in their best interest and not have the government tell them what is in their best interest is something that all people should be standing for, understanding that this is, yes, about the women of Nevada, but it's about the women of America. And in that way, I want to thank the Nevada legislature for what you've been doing. You all have been fighting on the front lines to protect women, um, including Assemblywoman Selena Torres, who I met with last week in my ceremonial office in Washington, D.C. And again, General Ford was one of the leaders who came to Washington to talk with other attorneys general about what this means in terms of standing for fundamental principles that are about justice. Uh, I will close by saying that this, in many ways, sadly, may just be the beginning. We have a Supreme Court justice, his name is Clarence Thomas, who said the quiet part out loud when talking about other fundamental rights that we thought were long settled may be up for debate or even attack, including the right to have access to contraception, same-sex marriage. So everyone is impacted by this decision in one way or another, and we must all stand for the principles upon, again, which our great nation was founded, which is freedom and liberty for all, including the women of America. So with that, I thank you all for your leadership. I'm looking forward to our conversation, and I'll return the microphone to the Attorney General. Well, thank you so much, uh, Madam Vice President. Uh, I think we, we would like to uh, begin the, um, the conversation 
uh, around the table here, and I do believe that we have uh, representative, representatives from several different organizations, and we will take an opportunity to have them introduce themselves uh, and go from there. Why don't we start at the end of the table here? David Arnett Licker, Assemblyman, Southeast Side. I also teach health law at University of Nevada, Las Vegas, Boys School of Law. Assemblywoman Gonzalez, I represent Assembly District 16, um, and I also teach at the University Race Class in Gender and Education. Assemblywoman Selena Torres from Las Vegas, Nevada. Here we go. Assemblywoman Danielle Monroe Moreno. I represent Assembly District 1 in the legislature. Hi, Rochelle Wynn, Assemblywoman from Assembly District 10 in Central Las Vegas. Hi, Assemblywoman Michelle Gorlo, and I represent Assembly District 35 in the southwest part of Las Vegas. Nicole Canazaro, Senator from Senate District 6 and the Senate Majority Leader. Senator Pastorman and I represent Senate District 1 and I'm the Chief a Majority Whip. Melanie Scheibel, I represent Senate District 9. Good afternoon, Fabian Donate, I represent Senate District 10 right here in the heart of Las Vegas. Chandra Summers Armstrong, uh, legislative representative for Assembly District 6 in uh, historic West Las Vegas and near North Las Vegas. Good afternoon, Raquel Cruz Juarez, she, her. I am the director of Latino campaigns at Planned Parenthood Action Fund. Good afternoon, I'm Liliana Trejo Vanegas and I'm a volunteer with NARAL Pro Choice America. Uh, pronouns are she, her, hers. Good afternoon, my name is Erica Washington. I'm the Executive Director of Make It Work Nevada and Make It Work Nevada Education Fund, and I'm also appointed board member to the Maternal Mortality Review Committee for the state. Well, I'd like to offer Senator Canizaro uh, the microphone, please, before we uh, dismiss uh, the press. Thank you. Thank you, Attorney General Ford, um, and good afternoon. It is always great to have the Vice President with us here in Nevada to discuss uh, what I think is a really important topic, and that is the importance of reproductive health care for Nevada, for Nevadans. As a legislator and as a new mom to a really fabulous one-year-old, uh, I know just how important it is to allow Nevadans to make their own health care decisions and to ensure that access to reproductive health care. Um, in 2019, and I know we've talked a little bit about the progress that we've been able to make here, and I, I just want to shine a special light on that because my colleagues here were instrumental in, in helping us in this regard. But in 2019, along with many other of our Democratic colleagues, we passed the Trust Nevada Women's Act, which sought to expand access to reproductive health services and to ensure that patients who were seeking an abortion receive only medically accurate information from their physicians. In 2021, I also sponsored legislation that allows pharmacists to dispense birth control, allowing greater access to contraception and reducing barriers for women who are attempting to obtain health care here in Nevada. During my time in the Senate, we have also invested tens of millions of dollars into family planning services throughout the state to expand both pre- and postnatal Medicaid services for pregnant mothers and to cut through bureaucratic red tape, helping to ensure more positive health outcomes for pregnant Nevadans and their babies. But now it is even more critical, and Madam Vice President, I think you laid it out quite well, that we continue to invest in reproductive health care with the Supreme Court overturning Roe versus Wade and extremist Republicans doing everything that they can to strip away our rights, we must make sure that we do everything that we can to protect access to reproductive health care. That's why when Democrats return to Carson City in 2023, we'll take additional steps to further protect the right to an abortion in Nevada. And that is why I am so grateful for the Biden-Harris administration, who has made it abundantly clear that they stand with a majority of Americans and the majority of Nevadans 
who support access to safe, legal abortion and to allow women to make their own health care decisions. Madam Vice President, I can't thank you enough for being here today, for helping to lead this conversation, and thank you for standing up for women across America and especially here in Nevada. I moved a, quick, a bit too quickly. Next up, we have Senator Spearman, please. Thank you, and good morning, Madam Vice President. And I want to start off by saying I am eternally grateful that we have the Biden-Harris administration leading the charge on protecting uh, reproductive rights. Uh, not only am I a state senator, uh, I'm also a former pastor, uh, a former hospice and hospital chaplain, and I am a veteran. I served in the armed forces for 29 and a half years, and I was fully prepared to give my life in the service for freedom. And so that's why this is very important to me. I believe comprehensive reproductive health care, including access to birth control and safe and legal abortion, is an essential part of a woman's health and well-being. We must stand in the gap as advocates and policymakers for those who need this coverage and to ensure that services are available to all women regardless, regardless of their economic status. As a pastor, I have always said, reproductive choice is a personal and often agonizing process, and it is, make no mistake about it, a matter between a woman and her God. Thank you, Madam Vice President, for being here. Thank you, Senator Spearman. Next up, we'd like to hear from uh, Senator Scheibel, please. Oh, thank you so much, Attorney General Ford, and thank you so much, Vice President <coughs> Harris, for being here with us today. Um, it is truly an honor to have you at the table engaging in this discussion, which is sadly very timely. While I do believe that it is always the right time to talk about our freedoms and especially reproductive justice, it has become especially important right now with the recent overturning of Roe v. Wade. And in November, there are going to be millions of Americans who have the chance to go to the polls and express their preference for legislators and other elected officials who will fight for their right to choose or those who will fight against it. And I'm so proud to be joined by colleagues from the legislature, from the federal administration, from our advocacy groups, our folks on the ground who do this work every day, who will fight with me and beside me to protect the right to choose for all Nevadans. And that work uh, is ongoing. It started long before we walked into this room and it will continue long after we walk out. But there is no substitute for being joined by some of the most influential leaders of our time and of our nation to have this conversation and to engage in this work. So I want to thank you for coming and thank you for joining us and express um, my both my appreciation uh, to everybody here and also uh, how much I look forward to this conversation and all of the good policy that I know will come from it. Thank you, Assemblywoman, uh, pardon me, uh, Senator Scheibel. Let's turn now to Assemblywoman Gorlow. Thank you all so much for being here today. And I want to send a special thank you to you, Madam Vice President, uh, for convening this meeting today and highlighting the importance of protecting the right to reproductive care for women around the country. You have been a strong leader and advocate in this fight for women all across the country, and we are truly grateful for your leadership. In Nevada, our legislature has proven its commitment to defending values in pro-choice freedoms, and we've done this by passing legislation to protect women and further strengthen their right to privacy and health care access, whether it's obtaining necessary abortion care or having access to contraception. In 1990, the citizens of Nevada voted to solidify abortion access in our state constitution, and 30 years later, we cannot and we will not roll these protections backwards. Our legislature passed the Trust of Women Act in 19, or 2019, aimed at protecting women's privacy and shielding healthcare providers and patients from criminal penalties. I am so proud of the work that my colleagues and I have accomplished, but today we are at a crossroads. We must choose the path to progress to defend our values and the rights of women. Thank you, Madam Vice President, for leading on this issue at the national level and I look forward to working with everyone at this meeting to ensure that Nevada remains a leader in protecting reproductive freedoms. Thank you so much. Thank you, Senator Woman Gorlow. If I could ask Senator Woman Wynn to please take the mic. 
Thank you, and good afternoon, and welcome to everyone that's in attendance today. Again, my name is Assemblywoman Rochelle Wynn, and I represent Assembly District 10. Um, I'd like to start by thanking Vice President Kamala Harris for being here. Um, she was actually, whether or not she knew it, um, I was fortunate enough to be with many members of this room during the 2019 session when we became the first female majority legislature. And um, I remember meeting you and you um, joining in that celebration when you were up in Carson City. So it is always great to see you in Nevada, especially under such historic conditions. Um, a lot of times people ask me, like, what, what changed having a female majority legislature? And I think it is the decisions that we made that were highlighted by Senate Majority Leader um, Canizaro um, with the Trust Women um, Act and Trust Nevada Women Act, um, providing contraceptive care. And um, you can see those changes by the diversity that's represented in this room and in our state. The resolve of Nevadans is strong in the face of challenges aimed at reproductive um, freedoms. And we have shown the American people that we will continue to defend the rights of women no matter where they come from. Um, just another reason we should be the first in the nation when it comes to the primary selection. Um, you know, we've highlighted the 2019 and 2021 um, reproductive healthcare um, initiatives and bills that we passed. And so I won't get into that, but um, I hope that when we look back at this moment, um, we're at a pivotal time in our history. And decades from now, when we look back on this um, and we see these trying times that are happening in our society and happening in our state, that we will remember what's at stake here. Um, the right to vote, the right to drink clean water, to breathe clean air, um, the right to reproductive health care and privacy, the right to unionize, um, the right to know who we are and be that person. So um, I look forward, I'm continually inspired by um, the people that are in this room that are doing the work um, in our state capitol and um, on the ground. So thank you for so much for being here. Thank you, Assemblywoman. If I could ask Assemblywoman Monroe Moreno to please uh, address us. Thank you, A.G. Ford, and thank you, Madam Vice President Harris. Um, it is so good to see you here in Nevada with us in our great state of Nevada, um, where we've made so much progress to defend the right to abortion and reproductive freedom. As the first female majority state legislature in the country, we have been on the forefront when it comes to passing impactful and meaningful legislation to ensure that reproductive rights are protected here in Nevada. As other states across the country are rolling back these protections, I am so proud of the Nevada legislature for not only protecting the right to abortion and reproductive health, but expanding it. During the past two legislative sessions, my colleagues and I, as you've heard, along with our governor, took historic steps to protect and uphold reproductive freedoms in our state. We passed a bill that ensured sexual assault survivors can receive emergency contraception in our state emergency rooms. Because of our work in the legislature, Nevada now has a dedicated funding, as was stated by our majority leader, for family planning. And we made sure that community health nurses, who are the main family planning providers in our rural communities here in Nevada, are able to access those state dollars for family planning services too. Nevada has been committed to respecting the rights of women to make their own reproductive decisions. And thanks to the hard work of my colleagues and our governor, we will continue to make sure that Nevada is a leader in reproductive freedom for years to come. As a legislator who is a black woman, a mom of biracial children and grandchildren, I have a clear understanding of the maternal health disparities in our country and the necessity to protect reproductive freedoms for future generations. So I thank you again, Madam President, for leading on this issue at the national level. And I look forward to continue working with you as you help me pass the Maternal Mortality Review Committee bill here in our legislature. I, I look forward to continue working with you so that reproductive decisions about families are kept in the hands of Nevada's women. Thank you, Assemblywoman Moro Moreno. And if uh, Assemblywoman Torres, please, if you would offer some thoughts. 
Thank you, Attorney General Ford, and thank you, Madam Vice President, for coming to my side of the country this time. Uh, you got to take the long flight, and I got to rest here at home. Good afternoon. I'm Assemblywoman Selena Torres, and I proudly represent Assembly District 3 here in Las Vegas, Nevada. Uh, it is an honor to be here with you all today, uh, and I'm excited to have the Vice President here in our beloved state to discuss this critical issue of reproductive health care that our, that our nation is facing. The Nevada Legislature is at the forefront of taking on this issue. We're committed to investing in maternal health and morbidity programs and ensuring that medical professionals have the training necessary to provide culturally competent care. As an educator, I've seen many of my students serve as translators for their families in school buildings, at the grocery store, and unfortunately, in doctor's offices. We must support these families by ensuring adequate funding of translation services and medical offices across the nation. As my colleagues before me have mentioned, our state legislature has taken huge Let me be clear, what we're seeing right now is a movement to criminalize reproductive health care. Unfortunately, this will be an undue burden on immigrant families who will fear that their, this criminalization will lead to their family separation. Abortion is a social justice issue. Nevada is a beacon of hope for patients seeking access to beacon abortion. of hope for patients seeking access alone. to abortion. But we can't do this alone. We need the federal government to continue to support these efforts. We must continue to protect our communities. And I look forward to working with everyone in this room to ensure that we protect these freedoms for future generations. Thank you, Madam Vice President, for joining us today. Thank you, Senator Torres. And with that, I'm looking forward to this fantastic discussion, Madam Vice President. Uh, um, the viewpoints raised at this table, um, um, I think, uh, demonstrate the importance of this topic and this conversation, and we're looking forward to having it. So with that, we, uh, we'd like to bid the, uh, the press a, a fair afternoon. Uh, thank you so much, and uh, have a great day.